This is the Neo 80, and to be honest, I think this is my end game. Now don't get me wrong, I've got plenty of keyboards that cost a lot more than this board does, but if I had to design the perfect keyboard for my own use in 2024, I'd say this checks all the boxes. So let's talk about it, but first I wanted to apologize for my lack of content lately. 2024 has gotten off to a pretty rough start as far as Maker Mods is concerned, and I've been in a bit of a funk regarding what I want this channel to look like moving forward. Now don't worry, I'm not quitting YouTube, at least not yet. But as my IRL gets busier with my day job and my family, I'm finding I've got a lot less time to press record at the end of a day, and I'm not gonna lie, Power World is constantly calling my name. Let me know in the comments if you're playing Power World, and if you are, who's your favorite pal? Mine is undoubtedly Wixen for her versatility, and to be honest, I see the Neo 80 a lot like the Wixen of mechanical keyboards. The Neo 80 is a 10 keyless or TKL keyboard that comes with the ability to be run in a plethora of mounting options, including plateless, gasket socks, gasket jackets, and even gummy o-ring mount. It also incorporates the screwless magnetic design that we saw in the more recent QK series of boards, and I love how easy it is to take apart and rebuild into different configurations. It's got a tasteful RGB PAL sphere on the top face, and it has honestly no business sounding as good as it does for the price. Let's take a listen to the board in its various configurations using no foams. Switches are the HMX Cloud Full Travel Linears from UniKeys. Keycaps are GMK Hennessy. Here are the typing tests. So out of all the different mounting configurations that I tested, you might have noticed the hybrid plateless configuration that I listed in the middle of the tests. If you were wondering what that was all about, I noticed that the gasket sock offered a more emphatic spacebar sound during typing, but I personally preferred the slightly softer type feel of the gasket dumbbells. So I decided to try combining the two with gasket socks on the bottom and gasket dumbbells on the top. After testing the hybrid mount though, I have to say I wasn't a huge fan of the overall type feel. While there was definitely an improvement in the spacebar sound, it came at the expense of a slightly odd typing sensation, especially in row 4 as the top rows of alphas were bouncier than the bottom, which was quite stiff. unbalanced. Thankfully, swapping out configurations takes literally 30 seconds thanks to the screwless assembly system that I'm personally a huge fan of. Overall, as is to be expected, gasket socks lead to a slightly stiffer type field than gasket dumbbells. On a side note, the 1.6mm non-flex cut PCB is quite stiff and the mounting points in the PCB for both plate and plateless configs are pretty substantial as well, with no leaf spring type system that would allow for more flex. But like I mentioned before, I love this board for its versatility as well as its price. At just $150 with a copper weight seen here and a tri-mode wireless PCB, the Neo 80 offers endgame level quality and customizability at Keychron level pricing, which is huge. QWERTY keys and Neo keyboards are single-handedly making JST connectors obsolete through their use of magnetic connectors, and I'm really hoping once again that these catch on in the hobby at large. As it stands, I've been daily driving the Neo 80 for the past month and repeatedly swapped between mounting configs when I got the itch to try something new. And I have to say, I think this is peak performance in my opinion. Just like Wixen, while there might be other boards that do certain tasks better, I don't know if there's another board on the market right now that can do everything this board can do, especially at this price point and quality. Check out some more keyboard content here. I'm MakerMods, and I'll catch you in the next video.